one and two parents is really one. My mom did most of the work. He just stayed home. I watched my mom get beat, drew through the house, I had to stay in a child's place. It was rough. I, I, had, I couldn't learn nothing. My stepdad made his, his my stepbrother his son. Can't wait. This is deep, man. I miss her so much. So I, all I had besides God. What's up, YouTube? Top Flight USA back with another one. How you doing, young lady? I'm doing all right. How about y'all? You doing good. Thanks for asking. What's your name, age, and where you from? Patrice Johnson, 34, Flushing, Queens, New York. From New York. Shout out New York. All right. How long you been in North Carolina? Since I was like maybe 12, 13. 12, 13 years old? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you currently homeless? Yes, sir. How long you been homeless? About going on two years now. Okay, two years ago, what exactly caused you to be homeless? I was in recovery and I got in a fight. I was like a weekend day from getting uh, my civil chip number and a girl swung at me and missed and I just two piece ass and I got kicked out. Okay, so you was in recovery and you got in a fight. Yep. And they kicked you out. Yep. Damn. So how, how far along in recovery were, were you? From 2017 to then when I got kicked out. Damn. So you had a good good amount of time in there before they kicked you out. Right. I was clean for like a year and some change. I had a bad relapse. Whoa. I went to prison. Came out. I see my baby. Uh, <laughs> and I rallied my probation and went back and did two years. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, talk about your childhood a little bit. We're going to get to know you. Um, did you grow up in a two-parent household? Yeah, it was my mom, my stepdad, and my husband. Okay, so how was it growing up with two parents? It was one and two parents. It was really one. My mom did most of the work. He just stayed home. I watched my mom get beat, drew through the house. I had to stay in a child's place. It was rough. I, mean, I, had, I couldn't do nothing I could do. But as I got older... It's like, I started retaliating, like, I started like, defending my mom, like, I been raped by him, and made his son have raped me. I can't have kids because of that shit. Shit just got rough. I just, he ran away and hit the streets, and after that, I just said, fuck it. Okay, hold on. You said, who raped you? My stepdad made his, his my stepbrother, his son, can't rape me. Your stepdad made his son, his son rape yes, you? When my mom was at work. How old work. was you when that happened? I was 12. Did you tell anybody about that? Not the first time, though. So how did that make you feel when he did that to you? I felt neglected. I felt, like, mistreated. I felt used. I felt, like, what did I do wrong? Did I deserve that? Like, I thought I did something. My mom didn't believe me. And the first time I didn't tell nobody, it happened again when I was 16 in the same household. I'm just like, I'm trying, I'm trying to talk, talk to the police about this shit. So you did tell the police? Yes, absolutely. And what happened? What happened they to them? They ended up getting time. Both of them? Yep. He was in the corner, they're like, yeah, I want the pussy, I got the pussy. Shit, she's a fucking female, my mom was at fucking work, what I'm supposed to do? And yeah, I made my son do it. If he didn't, I want to beat his ass, break his goddamn eye. And when she did, he focused on my back, his eye. Man. And my so, um, they got in trouble for it too, though. So how long did they get locked up for? My stepdad got 27 and my stepbrother got like 14. He was young. He was only, what, 13? Wow. Yeah. So your stepdad damn near got 30 years and, and the son got almost 15 years. Yeah. I can't have kids. I had 24 seasons inside, 24 outside. I had a shit bag. It was crazy. I can't even have kids because of that shit. Wow. I've been through some shit, man. Like, for real. And this happened when you was 12 years old. Yeah, I started when I was 12. Until I was 16, I just got fed and I ran away. I ain't never go back. And a week later, like a month after that, my mom called me. She was like, I need you to come help me. I can't move. I got in her house. He raped her with something. That's why I'm testing her ass like this fucking long, bro. And she ended up getting colon cancer and she beat it. And just came back up. She was just in hospital like two weeks ago. And she back home now and she going back to work. She doing all right now, but shit crazy, man. Man. Man, I'm sorry you had to go through that. First I'm, of all, I'm a survivor, but I'm a boy. Oof. It was tough. It and was then you hard. said you can't even have kids because of that happened. No, sir. 
Mm. Yep. Wow. I was talking about it because I wanted to hold that shit in because it made me think like, I had to learn every man not the same. You know what I'm saying? You got some good, you got some bad. But I just don't trust me and Pew. Like, no, no, I'm by myself anyway. Yeah. All so, that, I was looking over my shoulder, watching my back, like, who behind me, all types of shit like that. Right. So, do you think, um, are, are you a lesbian? I go both ways. You go both ways. Okay. So, did that have an effect on your life? Did that make you, like, stop liking men? Or, or at that age, stop liking boys? Period. I went and hugged my brother. They was just looking at me and crying. Like, what the hell is what is wrong with you? I mean, your brother, like, you can't hug you. I, I was just, yeah, get off me, get off me. I went out and my brothers. I got seven brothers and four sisters. I don't let them hold, hug me or nothing. It, just, it was just that it may have a major impact on my life. Like, who can I trust? Sometimes I don't even trust myself. I only trust God. Like, and that's crazy. I'm just being real. Right. Wow. Did you have any counseling or therapy? Yes, I had a counseling. I had a mental health doctor. I had a therapist. I had all that. I still wow. go to the day. Like, they come check on me while I go. I go in. I do an in, I go inpatient while they come out and check on me. I have a, you know, in the case maybe. So that situation that happened that long ago, it still messes with you to this day? Sometimes, yeah. I have sometimes certain men, like, their boy just doing my go. I have, like, a flash, but, like, you know, he put his hands on me, it's going to be a problem. Right. That's crazy, man. Yeah, like I said, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Uh, right, right. Shit, no female had to deal with nothing like that, especially right. not in the household. I right. could just well, I imagine... Yeah, I could just imagine how uncomfortable you felt after that happened. I left, left. I ran away. I didn't want to be there. So you ran away after that situation yep. happened? I never went back. And you never went back? Until my mother come in that day and tell me about what happened to her. And can't no dick do no shit like that. People respond to this out that damn long, no way in the hell. Wow. wow. And I found her laying on her stomach, on her bed, like, you know, she hanging out her ass, like, these are small intestines. Like, what the fuck? Where's this nigga at? I'm about to kill him. Wow. That's deep, man. Man. I can only imagine how that made you feel at the time, being so young like that. And then you ran away. Where did you go? I ran to my grandmother. I'm back to New York. And then she got sick, and I had no help. I was trying to go, yeah, I was trying to get my scholarship to LSU playing basketball, and fucked around. She got sick. I had no help with this. I had to bring her back down here, close to the other family members, and her sisters and brothers. And I still couldn't get no help. And she ended up dying like a month after we got back down here. It's like she raised me when I ran away. She one took me in. I'm great. I'm the first great grand to her. When she finally passed. When she passed, like my whole world just crushed. It was like I lost. Like half of me was gone. Like, I passed. Like no feeling. Like, I just like. Like, a part of me had my body was gone. That was my world. I love that woman to death. Mm. She cut me out. She threw, she threw me at my mom. She cut the building for everything. So your grandma was your heart? That was my world. That was my everything. My mima. I love my mima. What about my cry for it? When did she pass away? In May 2014. Mm. Um, and I was in South Point Wilmington working. I was y'all working with Bedford and Ducks then doing rest of re re restoration work. And I had a phone call that he put my bus on the train. I had to brush back down here because she was I wanted to see again. I need to come down. I had to go right there. I went never seen her again. And I went, and man, I got to that I didn't see you room, yo. Wow. Seems like you've been through a lot, man. Hey. Yeah. I'm so much. Mm. I definitely understand how you feel. I lost my grandmother in 2015. So See, I, all that had besides God. So my mom was still trying to be with him and do, you know, do her own thing. But she was married to him. Hey! It was like, fuck me and my brother and sister type shit. Wow. 
Yeah, go ahead and get it out, man. It's it led, okay. It led up to this. That's why I'm here now, like, and she died. I remember in New York, all my, all her other cousins, I done took over her house, all that stuff in New York, church, all my stuff I had there. They let me get all the pictures me and her had together, but other than that, they won't let me stay. So then I come back down here, like, goddamn, my mom was, was like, she was down me, she wanted to do me, I ruined her marriage. I got her raped and all this dumb shit. It was my fault it happened to her and me. Fuck. So I just came and started working with this guy. Go to right here in Raleigh downtown. And, and go to Raleigh station, bus station downtown. And, and more square. I've been here ever since. And I found this little spot right here. And boom. I'm in my own little community family right here. Right. So, you think because of your grandmother passed, that's what led you into your addiction? Yeah, because I felt like I had nothing to live for. Like, she was gone, my mom didn't give up on me. And why not? I was getting high just to block everything out, you know? And drink, drink, drink. And I drink my problems away. And that's why I went to rehab. And that didn't work because it, it was just too much. I, I couldn't do it. So, Being, what, all, what all, all are you addicted to? Alcohol and crack cocaine. Okay. And those were my masters. Alcohol, I got, if I don't have it every, at least one, one or three, three to five beers a day, I'm an asshole. Now, I don't want to talk, leave me alone. I'd be so like, sick throwing up. It's just that bad. Like, I think I got more alcohol in my system than I got blood, just to be honest. So, you feel like you can't go a day without drinking? No. And what does it do to your body if you did, if, if you did go a day without drinking? I'd be sick. I can't eat. I just sleep and cry, sleep and cry. Wow. Um, when I go steal me a beer, try to get somebody that I know that boost, go get me a 12 pair, I give five, ten dollars, half whatever the beer costs. I get them half of that. Half, say the beer costs 15, I get them like 750, or say it costs 12, I get them six, if I had it, or whatever. When I go sit on myself, I hope and pray to God I don't get caught. I never, never got caught, thank God. But yeah, it's just that serious. So, how do you make your money out here? I'm paying them sometimes. I got calls on my aunts, my cousins, if they can. Before my cash app got hacked, they would send me like little cash apps here and there, and I would let it stack up. And some would send me five, one send me 10, one would send me 20. I would let it stack up to at least like 50. And I would just go like, I'm saying, I'll give me a crack rock, like 20, and take the other 10, get alcohol, and get cigarettes. And my day goes, I'm going to stay in my little tent. Right. Um, would you say it's dangerous out here being homeless? Yes, being a female is very dangerous. And it's about to get cold. It's very dangerous. Very. Since being on the south side, yes. So what's the craziest thing you've seen out here while being homeless? Mm. I've seen a man just a step woman like 17 times, like, Cause she didn't want to go stay in the room with him. Wow. And she just stood there and just stared her on the top of the head and her neck, her face, and just, mm. Did she die? Yeah, she died. Wow. So you seen a man and stab a woman witness. 17 times. On top of me, just, and then I flashed back, looking at it. What if it could have been? It been my, could have been my mom back then, you know, watching her get beat and go through the house by her hair by my stepdad. And I had still in the shop, I couldn't do nothing. I thought about it, somebody's mother. Like, I felt bad I felt like it was my fault. I could have stopped it, but I didn't want to intervene and get stabbed and cut and killed myself. Right. It's almost like it really wasn't nothing you could do. I mean, I, just, I thought of throwing up and like just throwing up like early when I opened. It's mean just that sick, just seeing that shit. Like, yo, that's somebody's mom. What can I do? Does anybody know her? Like, nobody would do. Everybody kept running, running away like they were scared. Everybody kept walking up. Oh shit. Running off, like, instead of just trying, all right. But I stayed there until the ambulance got there, and that's when I seen it. I told them nothing because I didn't want to be in it. You know? Right. Um, do you have any mental disorders? No. Okay. Just bipolar a little bit. Um, was you diagnosed with that, or do you just think you might be bipolar? I was diagnosed with it. It's manic. Okay. Okay. Do you take medicine for that? No, I quit taking it. Because it wouldn't make me nothing. It would make me like a fucking zombie. Like, looking crazy. You know, the man, I'm all crying and crazy. She don't look dumb. 
Okay. Um, do you think uh, it's your addictions holding you back right now? No. Okay. It's, just, it's just a mind thing. To me. Okay. I just, just do it and block my problems out, but the problems still gonna remain at the. So I try to keep my heart going, going, going. And I stop until so I just go to sleep. And I wake, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, yo, I need a crack rock. I need to get some new drink. I need a beer. I'm like, that's a change. Like, can't get a dollar, can't get a dollar here, a dollar there. So I get enough to get a beer. Which even a beer I drink is natural. I ain't so down 38 cents, get me a 16 or something. That's with tax. So you know that ain't hard. That's not hard to come out. I can, I can count 138 pennies to get a beer. You right. know what I mean? Right. So. Uh, do you think you'll be able to get a job and work with your addictions? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if there were, if your family happens to come across this video, what do you think their thoughts would be? They're probably like, why did you do that? Like, they'd probably be mad because I told my whole, basically, some stuff my family don't even know, so I hope they don't go that far. That they don't see it because certain things that I'm going to tell my family that I just told you. Feel me? Yeah. Do you think uh, they'll be in the mind frame of maybe coming out here and trying to help you? No. They'll come out here and try to fight me or be mad when I'm telling them my business and they ain't told them why you holding that shit in. You talk to a man you don't even know. But if I be mad, come out here and be mad and try to fight on me, yeah. Wow. Which ones help me? Fuck no. Wow. No. That's crazy. So I hope and pray to God it don't go no further. Then, you know. Fuck. Yeah. Alright, well, um, if there was any kids watching this, uh, what could you tell them to help them get through their problems? Maybe some of the similar problems that you went through as a child. What advice would you give them? First and foremost, do not hold it in. Just find your accounts and find somebody, That's one person me. you trust, talk to them. Spill it out, spill the beans, get up your chest. Go to school, stay in school, don't do drugs. Just tell somebody about it, get up your chest. The more you hold that shit in, you're killing yourself. That's it. Like, just hold your head up. Pray. Believe in God. And just leave it there. Pray and just leave it there. Let God deal with it. He knew you fucking knew yourself. He made you. He created you. Just give it to God and pray about it and just let him deal with it. He will never steal you wrong. And ain't too much you can you can't bear. Just hold your head and be strong. That's right. Treat love the kid. That's right. I definitely agree. Appreciate you for doing this interview. God yes, bless sir. you. Yes, sir. Bless you too. Thank you. All right.